Is an 8 azimuth telescope mount better than an EQ one? What are the benefits and drawbacks of both of these platform types? Well, stick around because in today's video I'm going to go over some of the more important aspects regarding these two mount types. Hi, I'm Bogdan Damian and welcome to BD Observatory. Ever since I started with astronomy, in my mind there always was this question whether to get an AZ or EQ mount whenever I thought about buying a new telescope. And as you probably guessed it, the answer isn't that simple because both platforms have their pros and cons. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Let's start first with the basics and look at these two most popular mount types individually. So, what is an AZ mount? AZ stands for azimuth and describes a type of mount where the telescope is configured around a vertical azimuth axis of rotation and a horizontal cross axis, the altitude or elevation axis. This means that in this case the horizontal X axis is parallel to the ground and you point a telescope up by tilting it vertically along the Y axis. So, if you want to follow a star across the night sky whilst looking through a telescope with an alt azimuth mount, then you need to move the telescope both on the X axis and on the Y axis to keep the object centered in the field of view. It's an uncomplicated design and this is also the main strength of this mount type. Because an AZ mount is so simple, it's very easy and intuitive to use. No initial alignment or adjustment needed. Just locate the object you are interested in and orient the optical tube of the telescope in that direction. It's also more lightweight and less bulky when compared to an EQ mount, making them easier to move around. AZ mounts are very popular especially among entry-level telescopes, but are not exclusive to. All types of telescopes can be purchased on AZ mounts. There is also a type of telescope that only uses an AZ platform, and that is the beloved Dobsonian reflector telescope. Its base can rotate around its axis, providing lateral movement for the telescope and the optical tube can move up and down on the y-axis. While the most popular type of AZ mounts are the manually controlled ones, there are also go-to versions available. Here a computer and motors take care of the orientation of the telescope. After an initial alignment, you tell it what objects you want to observe and the telescope orients itself and then tracks the object as it moves across the night sky. These types of mounts are especially useful when tracking objects at high magnifications. In these situations, planets, for example, will move across the field of view of the eyepiece very quickly. Having the job of tracking taken care of by the mount is very helpful and can greatly improve visual observations. The same argument applies, of course, to situations where you want to take pictures of the night sky. Computerized tracking will definitely improve the final results, but if astrophotography is your main goal, I would recommend getting an equatorial mount instead. Alt azimuth mounts just aren't as good at tracking objects over a longer period of time. Computerized mounts have one disadvantage though. They need a power source. While most of them work with a bunch of regular AA batteries, it is recommended to get an external rechargeable power supply in the long run. It will make your life much easier and also produce less waste. Another positive aspect of AZ mounts is that they don't need to be expensive to be good at what they do. A perfectly fine example would be the manually controlled AZ Pronto from Skywatcher. It's well built and sturdy enough to support lighter telescopes up to 3 to 4 kilograms without a problem. Its main advantage is that it does all this without it being big and heavy. 
In my opinion, it's the ideal mount for a dedicated travel setup. If you are interested in finding out more about the AZ Pronto mount, I will leave a link to its full review in the description below for you to check out later. There is also the AZ GTI mount, also from Skywatcher, that combines a good build quality and an affordable price with the convenience of go-to functionality. The mount head can be purchased separately without the legs or a tripod. This is a great option if you want to upgrade your existing manually controlled Skywatcher mount. The second type of telescope mounts that is also very popular is called an equatorial or parallactic mount. It is also known in the astronomy community as the German Equatorial Mount or GEM. This type of mount is built in such a way that it is able to compensate for the Earth's rotation by having one additional axis, the polar axis, that is parallel to the Earth's axis of rotation. The process of adjusting a mount on this polar axis is called polar alignment. Once the polar axis of the mount is accurately aligned with the north or south celestial pole, depending on which hemisphere you live on, the telescope will be able to keep an object centered in the field of view without the need to move the telescope on two axes, like in the case of an alt azimuth mount. In this case, we can say that the EQ mount will accurately track Earth's rotation. There are tons of tutorials online about how to polar align an EQ mount, so I won't describe it here in detail, but I will leave a link in the description below to a very informative video for you to check out if you're interested. While being able to track an object in the night sky this easily is definitely an advantage over an AZ mount, an equatorial platform has some drawbacks as well. The main one being that it's more complex, which in turn results in a heavier and bulkier construction compared to an AZ mount. This also translates into a higher purchasing price. An EQ mount is also less intuitive to work with initially, but after a while operating it will get much easier and you will be able to fully enjoy the advantage of its superior tracking ability. Even though an EQ mount can be used for visual observations without a problem, it's astrophotography where this platform really shines. Having to move the telescope only on one axis, either manually or automatically, will significantly improve the final results by allowing you to take sharper pictures with much longer exposure times. This will add a lot more details to the final image. As a manually controlled EQ mount, I really like the EQ3 version from Skywatcher or the EQ500X from Omegon. Both are very well built and are sturdy enough to support small and medium sized telescopes while still being reasonable in terms of pricing. As you might imagine, there are a lot of good options out there for computerized equatorial mounts for all budget types. Now I'm not an expert when it comes to astrophotography, but Trevor from the YouTube channel Astro Backyard is, and he posted a great article on his website where he also lists some very good options for go-to EQ mounts. His detailed explanations on EQ mounts are also worth reading. I'll leave a link to his article in the description below if you are interested. So, as you probably already figured it out, there isn't a mount type that is the best option for all possible situations. As with astronomy gear in general, the use case will dictate which telescope mount is the right tool for the job. If you are looking for something lightweight and affordable, then get a manually controlled AZ mount. Opt for a go-to version if you want a computerized object tracking for visual observations. If, however, astrophotography is your main interest, then get a computerized EQ mount head instead. 
All right, that's been it. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you didn't do so already, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Your support is much appreciated. Thanks for watching and catch you guys in the next video.